Um, I'm going to keep my speech pretty short and simple. Uh, less is more, in my opinion. Professor Scott covered quite a bit of it. Professor Brian now covered quite a bit of it. Um, so I want to touch on kind of like what my background is and how I even got into jiu-jitsu or martial arts, so to say. Um, so a lot of this you guys are going to hear, only like a handful of people in this room even know about this. I just told Professor Scott about this a couple months ago. He had no clue because I don't talk about it. It's not something I like to bring up and it's not something I like to brag about. Growing up as a kid, um, I got in trouble a lot. I was kind of like what you would say, like a bad kid. I fought a lot and I was constantly getting in trouble and I was always suspended from school, you know, always fighting. And that obviously attracted the wrong kind of people to my attention, right? People were like, oh, he likes to fight. He should come hang out with us. So one thing led to another. I ended up getting into a lot of trouble. I was in like seventh grade, man. And I was doing things that like a 12 year old or like a 13 year old should not have been doing. And I ended up getting in a lot of trouble. I was looking at, you know, going to jail, doing that whole deal. And then my parents were like, you know, Nicholas, what are we gonna do with you? At the time I grew up playing soccer. I was always very active. So I wasn't like I was a sheltered kid and I just had like a lot of built up anger and rage. I just liked to fight. That was my issue. So my parents were like, what are we gonna do with you? You know, I was like, you know, since I like to fight, why not do it legally, right? So what happened is I ended up signing up for boxing. So at the time I didn't know what jiu-jitsu was. Jiu-jitsu to me, I thought that was karate. And I didn't want to do that. I wanted to learn how to box, head movement, footwork, fight people. So the gym I signed up at, I started boxing. And I'm like two weeks into it, and this guy comes on down. I'm like 13. He's got busted up ears, busted up face. And I'm like, man, who is this guy? He's like, hey, do you know what jiu-jitsu is? And I'm like, no, I have no clue what it is. Was it like karate or something? And he starts laughing. He goes, hey, come upstairs with me. It was a two-story gym. So we go up there, and immediately he just doesn't negotiate on me. I go belly down because I didn't know how to break fall. Rear naked chokes me, and I like I'm gurgling. I don't know what tapping is. So he lets go, and he's like laughing. He's all, "How was that?" And I'm like, "Dude, what the hell?" I was like, "What is that? What just happened?" So that's how I got hooked to jujitsu. So from then on, I started training jujitsu all the time, and then I started, you know, obviously being positive. Stopped hanging around those kind of people. Started dedicating myself to martial arts, learning what it was, learning about Japanese culture. At the time when I started, I started, I was doing Muay Thai, boxing, gi, no gi, and judo five times a week. I was 13. Um, so I trained there for three years. Uh, by that time, uh, I've already had two MMA fights and uh, several, several Jiu Jitsu matches. So I already had quite a bit of experience. And things just didn't work out there, and I left, and I was trying to find another gym, and I didn't know where to go, so I was training in my living room, and I had friends that wrestled, so I'd bring them over, and then I had uh, people from the last gym that I went to, and I'd bring them over, I had mats, we'd all train and stuff. So eventually, I started looking around for gyms, and I found TNT, and I found Professor Scott. I was 16, and um, I was like, hey, you know, I tried a class, I was super interested in it, I really liked the way it was ran here, very organized, very high level guys, and um, so I ended up signing up. I ended up competing. Here's a funny story. Coach Scott still gives me issues about this one. So I used to do like a lot of 10th Planet game, the rubber guard and all that funky type stuff. We go out to Vegas and I go to compete at a Naga. And Coach Scott's like, whatever you do, don't pull rubber guard. What's the first thing I did? I pulled rubber guard. Then what happened? The guy ended up passing it. I regained guard, I was pretty good at shrimping, I was a little guy, I'd, pull, I'd regain guard, go back to rubber guard. Coach Scott's yelling, he's like, stop doing rubber guard! <laughs> you no, know, me, I'm 16, I, I don't, I'm not a good listener just yet. So I ended up losing that match pretty badly, it was like 15 to 2, something I don't even want to talk about. So he gets super mad, he come back, he talks to me, he's like, hey, he's like, if you want to train here, you got to listen. If you want to compete, you got to do the game plans that I give you. Well. What happened? I ended up sitting down, training, I went through our curriculum, got my blue belt in three months. I was like, right after I was 16 years old, got my blue belt. Then I started helping out with the kids class with Coach Mike and Coach Lee at the time. And then when I turned 18, I got my purple belt. Then I ended up having another MMA fight. We fought at Fort McDowell Casino. That was a super good event. That was the first fight I ever did where I got paid for. And I was just super hooked on all this. So, you know, obviously I'm continuously training, doing events, traveling. Every summer I'd go out all over California, Nevada, my mom and dad would take me. I would go cross gym, at, uh, cross train at all these high level gyms, train with all these famous people. And I just started to develop myself as a martial artist. And when I turned 20, I got my brown belt. And then here I am, 22 years old, getting my black belt. So that's basically my background. So with that being said, um, 
something I want to talk about, like a closing thought, kind of like what Professor Brian was saying. Um, with jiu-jitsu, you can't get better by training by yourself. I have people ask me when I'm teaching classes, Coach Nick, what can I do to get better? How can I practice this at home? Well, if you don't have another human being or like a grappling dummy, you can't. This isn't like boxing. You can't go box in the mirror and get good at it. You have to have a training partner. So with that being said, with the no ego issue, if you hurt your training partners, it's like breaking your toys. You have nothing to play with. If I hurt any of you guys, or I'm just like, oh guys, it's a free for all in class, go at it. And you guys start hurting each other, now we have no training partners, no teammates. So that's what I like about TNT and why I really recommend it here, is it's super non-ego, super friendly, super family oriented. Our kids' classes are ran real good, teens' classes, our adult classes. It's a smaller gym, lots of one-on-one -on -one attention. So everyone is being developed together. Like you're saying, like a laboratory, we're all in this together. So I couldn't do this without any of my training partners, my family for supporting me, my friends supporting me. So I appreciate every single one of you that came out here today. I know some of you called out of work. Actually, I was told that, where's Cheyenne at? He told me he left school. He left school to come here for this. So thank you, I really appreciate it. I know Professor Scott and Professor Brian also really appreciate this. So once again, thank you guys for coming.